let's discuss briefly the software and the data that went into this set of lessons. First of all, we started with ArcGIS, which is a software uh, produced by ESRI, Environmental Systems Research Institute. It is a powerful set of tools. Now, I, I'm hoping that what we emphasized in the lesson that even though GIS gives you a powerful set of tools, the most important tool is the student's mind, right? The GIS is a means to an end, but it is not the end. The end goal is not to be proficient at GIS, although there are many excellent career pathways that the students can uh, pursue in healthcare, environment, resources, defense, uh, uh, wildlife, uh, planning, geography, business, etc. with GIS. But the goal really is to get them to think critically, to think spatially, to use real-world data in a real-world context, solving real-world problems. And uh, what we tried to emphasize in this lesson, or these sets of lessons, is to get them to think spatially about not just ski areas, but about businesses in their community, about location of high schools or middle schools in their community, about the relationship between biodiversity and climate, the relationship between climate change and agriculture, the relationship between urban sprawl and land use and water resources and energy, all of these things that are major issues of our 21st century. The tool that we are using though is ArcGIS. It is used by local, regional, tribal, national, international governments. It is used by nonprofit organizations. It is used by private industry. It is used by nonprofits. Um, and so it's used all around or all around us. And the students are using the same tool that a scientist, a business person, a planner, uh, a university professor, etc., would use. And so that's that's very powerful. Um, the second piece of software that we used is ArcGIS Explorer, a free virtual globe from ESRI. That is what we used in the 3D analysis, which is which is uh, right here. Remember this? Okay. So those are the two tools that we used, the two pieces of software that we used. This this particular tool right here, this 3D tool, requires an internet connection. So you also have to have an internet connection for these images to stream down. Not the ski areas and highways and stuff. That's all running locally on your computer. But the uh, imagery itself and the elevation data, that's all streaming down from servers on the internet. Okay. Now back on the data sets now. We've talked about the software. The data sets are all public domain data that I downloaded from the internet and stored locally and gave it to you. The layers in this map of the ski areas is um, uh, from the, let's see, the ski areas came from the U.S. Forest Service on a place called roadless.fs.fed.us from the, from the Forest Service's roadless data set, uh, which is a study of the impact of roadways. The Shaded Relief is a 200 meter resolution image from nationalatlas.gov, which I clipped to the state of Colorado. The highways came from the Colorado Department of Transportation, uh, so CDOT. The rivers came from the Colorado Division of, of Water Resources. Let's take a look at those rivers and highways um, briefly. Take a look at highways. You know, we, we didn't do this with the lesson, but this is fascinating right here. If we just take a look at highways, I've still had this symbolized in terms of the vehicle traffic. So right here at a statewide level, this is fascinating stuff. You can see how much more traffic volume the highways near Denver have. And then also I-70 out to Grand Junction and even down here toward Delta and Montrose and I-25 toward Pueblo. And it markedly drops off uh, from that. But even that is just it's just great stuff, folks. Just, just great stuff. Turn off everything else except highways. Ha! Ah, that is just amazing. Just looking at those patterns. Okay. The rivers uh, from the Colorado Division of Water Resources. So there's your, there's your rivers data set. And let's just take a look at uh, the attribute table for rivers. Uh, you can label, uh, it's got the river name and uh, a couple of other things, okay, in the rivers data set, the watershed um, that they're in, and so on. Um, okay, what else can I tell you? Um, well, I will tell you this. Uh, so all the data is from uh, state and federal agencies. 
I projected all the data sets into a projection of the shaded relief image, which was the Lambert azimuthal equal area. I wanted equal area because I was measuring some areas, and uh, that's because it's in Lambert azimuthal for uh, North America, that's why Colorado is, looks to be sort of tipped toward the central part of the state. That's why it, the northern boundary of Colorado doesn't appear to be straight east-west. It is east-west, but it's in this Lambert azimuthal equal area projection. Uh, I clipped out the raster for the whole U.S. just to Colorado, as you saw, and I used, let's turn off everything except this image for Colorado, I used the Extract Mask tool in Arc Toolbox to do that. I used annotation for the ski area labels so that the labels could be moved off of the ski area boundaries for increased flexibility and legibility. So that's what I did behind the scenes. Uh, and as you step into doing more with GIS in the future, you're probably going to want to prepare your own data. Now, there's nothing wrong with using data that's already been prepared. For example, the ski area lesson. You take this data, you give it to the students, and they're going to be off and running. With you as the guide, the, the guider, the guide, uh, the guide uh, into their spatial analysis. Uh, your role is critical as an educator here, folks. Um, again, the tools are just tools. They, they are as, only as good as how you use them in the classroom. So, number one, you don't have to be an expert in GIS to be using these tools. Um, your role is critical, though. Your role is to guide the students into thinking spatially and being critical about the data. Okay, developing those critical thinking skills. Without you there uh, as a guide, it's it's interesting and it's it's uh, you know they're learning the software but your role I, f I feel is is critical and the good thing is that the students will tinker they will experiment with different parts of the software so you don't have to be the GIS guru in your campus or in your classroom indeed what we've seen with GIS is that many students get into peer mentoring in a powerful way that frees you up from having to be the expert um, and it also uh, allows you time to do what you love to do the best and what your best at doing and, and what you are, got into teaching to do, and that is to frame those inquiry-based questions for the students to really dig into in a powerful way.